everyone. Welcome to the Aptics 101 series. In this series, we will explore application analytics and learn how to master the art of leveraging in-app insights to improve app performance and user experience. In today's webinar, we will take a deep dive into sessions, screens, and APIs. Before we dive deep into today's session, Let's have a quick recap of what we covered in our previous webinar. We saw the importance of gathering contextual user feedback, an overview of in-app feedback and bug reporting features in Aptics, and implementing shake-to-share -share feedback pop-ups, and then we saw how to assign feedback as bugs or support tickets to integrations, and lastly, we saw how to ensure user privacy while collecting feedback. Now that we have seen what we have covered in our last webinar, let's take a look into what we are going to dive deep into today's webinar. Today, we are going to see the importance of understanding how your users interact with your app. And then we will have an introduction to sessions, screens and APIs. And lastly, we'll see how to configure them and use these features effectively. Why do you need to know how your app users interact with your app? What is its importance? Let me start with a very simple question for you to understand this concept. What's your favorite app? Mine might be Zepto because I am a foodie and I usually like to order many things online. You must sure have your own favorite app, right? So how often do you check your favorite app? I usually check it many times a day, probably when I have any cravings for food or anything like that. How long do you spend on it each day? Maybe you open it only for a few minutes or sometimes you get so absorbed that time flies by. For example, uh, my sister is a very much shopping addict. She usually goes through the Misho app and time flies by. She doesn't even know how long she's scrolling to it. You must also have experienced such situations, right? Now, let's imagine that you're the one who created the app. You would want to know what keeps people coming back, which parts are very much interesting in your app, or even which features need a bit of polishing, right? You know what? One of the biggest secrets to building great app lies in understanding your users. Knowing when they open it, which features they love and where they might get stuck gives you the power to improve that experience and keep your users coming back. So today, we will see exactly how Zoho Aptics can help you do that by using sessions, screens and APIs. These insights lets you shape up your app experience and keep your users coming back for more. Does it sound interesting? Let's dive right in. So first, we'll start off with sessions. Sessions is an important metric that tells you when and how long users are actively interacting with your app. Think of a session as the time a user is actively engaged with your app in one go, from the moment they open it until they close it or minimize it. So each time a user brings your favorite app to the front and starts using it, that actually triggers a session. So as long as the app stays open or until the session continues, till when they exit or switch to another app, that session wraps up. So why is session tracking very valuable? Let me give you the answer for that. You know why? Because it reveals user engagement. Frequent or long sessions means your users find your app valuable or engaging. Suppose if your sessions are short or rare, it might be a sign that the app user's experience needs to be improved. So now that we have figured out about session, let me show you how to configure it in the Aptix console. Before we start exploring this feature in the console, you need to make sure that you have done the SDK integration for your app. We have discussed the SDK integration in our previous session. So if you have any doubts regarding it, you can please refer to the last webinar recordings or also you can refer to the SDK integration guide, which is available on our website. So now this is the dashboard. 
So to view the sessions or to configure the sessions feature, please go to the engagement part and here you can find the sessions feature. Now please click on to it. Here in this platform, you will see the each session that has happened for, uh, for e any platform like iOS or Android. So you can see the total session count and duration, the minimum and maximum session and duration, and lastly, the average session duration for the selected date range. So if you want to select the date range, you can click here and you can click on any date range that you want to see the data or the stats for. Plus, you can use also the filters that's available here. Please go and click on this icon. So once you click on this icon, you can use these filters to get specific details by brand, platform, app version, device type, or even by country. So this helps you understand engagement patterns across multiple segments. In Android, App sessions are tracked automatically as soon as you initialize Aptix Analytics class. If suppose you prefer not to track sessions automatically, you can opt out by setting a method called as automatic session tracking status to false in initialization method. So just be sure to disable it before you initialize Aptix. Now coming to iOS, Aptix automatically tracks sessions once it's initialized via the Aptix Analytics class. To disable automatic session tracking, you can set it to automatic session tracking status to false before initializing Aptix. So now that we have seen how to configure sessions in our console, let's now move on to screens. What is screens? Screens is nothing but the specific content that your users see in your app. So every screen they visit represents a point in their journey. And tracking these screens helps you analyze the journey in detail. So let's say your users are uh, spending a lot of time on a product screen. So that might be, that might indicate that they are interested. But also sometimes it could suggest that there's something confusing on that screen. Maybe they can't find the add to cart button easily or they are unsure about what to do next. So when you monitor this, you will get very much useful insights to make small changes. Suppose like if they are, you know, not able to find the add to cart button and you get that insight, you can, you know, move that button or simplify the layout to make your app e easier to use and guide them smoothly throughout their journey. Now that we have seen what is screens, Let's also see how to configure screens as the same way we saw for sessions in the Aptix console. Now the same way as for sessions, you also need to make sure that you have the SDK integration done for your app. So now let's see how to configure screens. The same way as for sessions, please go to the engagement part and click on screens. So here you will see a list of all the screens that viewed that is viewed by your users with details like OS type, total screen visit, minimum and maximum and average duration. Now there are some helpful features that you'll want to make the most use. Let me show to you it one by one. Here you can see an archive list, right? So if you have any screens that are no longer relevant or actively used, you can easily archive them by clicking on the icon and then selecting it. And then done. This is actually the archive list. Suppose you want to archive it, you can click on the small icon here and click on the archive icon. And yes, done. It will be archived. The second feature is you can edit your display names. Sometimes screen names aren't as intuitive as they could be. So what you can do is you can glow and click here. When you hover it on one of the points here, you can click the edit option and you get to edit it. Suppose here it's known as analytics setting or I could set it as analytics screens 
and then if you click on update done there you go you can edit it now suppose you want to set your favorite screens or apis so for quick access to your most important data you can mark specific screens or apis as favorite so you can see the little star button here you can click on it and then it will be added to favorites lastly suppose you want to export data so when you need to dive deeper into your analysis or share insights simply click on this export option that's available here this will automatically download a csv file for you and when you click on this file you will have the required details that you need so for android aptix automatically tracks activity screens by default so you don't need to have any extra setup in most needed cases however if you prefer to control which activities are tracked you can opt out of automatic tracking by setting automatic activity tracking status to false before initializing aptix so this allows for you to customize which screens are recorded so it gives you more granular granular control over the data that is collected if your app uses fragments and you like them to be tracked automatically what you can do is you can enable fragment tracking by setting automatic fragment tracking status to true so when you do this it will ensure that all the fragment screens are tracked along with activities providing a more complete view of user interactions across your android app now coming to ios to manually track screens what you will need to do is use track view enter in view did appear to start tracking when a screen appears and track view exit in view will disappear when it's about to disappear also you can assign custom names to your screens for clear analytics but when you assign custom names please make sure that the names are under 250 characters and also make sure it starts with a letter and avoid any reserved prefixes now for automatic tracking enable it by setting enable automatic screen tracking to true in aptix config to only track specific screens set track all screens to false and use the ap screen name property for custom naming in each view controller this will allow a very flexible tracking without for you to have to do any manual setup so lastly together sessions and screen tracking reveal a lot about the journey that your users take don't they highlighting it it also highlights opportunities for improvement in your app but what about specific actions they take like when they make a request or retrieve data how do you monitor that that is when api tracking comes in all right let's wrap up with api tracking what is api tracking it's nothing but all about understanding how efficiently your apps back end functions are working apis connect different parts of your app to provide a very smooth experience for your users now let's say suppose a api isn't working well say it's slow to respond or doesn't complete the request it can cause delays or errors in your app and these issues can impact the user experience which is very important and you know what sometimes even without you realizing it it can impact the user experience so now to solve this problem that's where api tracking helps you so with zoho aptix api tracking lets you see how often each api is being used how quickly it responds and whether it succeeds or fails this data makes it easy to catch any problem spots and fix them so your app runs smoothly for your users so let's see how to configure this in our console to start tracking apis first you need to go to the engagement part and click on apis to configure an api so let's see how to configure an api click here on the configure api button and you need to add the required details such as the display name let me add name as 
yes and then you need to add the URL mm. yes and here on the type you have three options these three options mean something let me tell you what the meaning is simple match means which matches the exact URL without parameters single with param means which matches the URL with a single parameter and regex match means which matches on a regular expression and it's also perfect for any dynamic URLs so here let me click on single ma simple match so once you see that you have filled out all the required details click save and that's it you're done your API is added successfully give me a second let me do a hard refresh so once it's configured it will appear here on the dashboard so here you can view your performance stats by platform brand app version device model and country and if you want you can also bookmark your frequently used API or copy individual IDs so here you can copy it if you want and also you can bookmark it so now in Android you can track API's only after you have configured them in the Aptix web console where you where your each API receives a unique ID so let's say suppose you're a retrofit user you can add Aptix analytics API tracking interceptor to your OK HTTP client builder for API calls and then use the track API with annotation on the API interface method adding to the API ID provided in the console. If you start using other networking libraries, use start, start track API with the API ID and request method before making the network call. This method will return a tracking ID which you'll pass along with the API response code to end the track API method once the response is received. Now coming to iOS, Tracking is also initiated with the unique API ID. So use start track API with API ID and request method before making the network call. This method returns a tracking ID. After you have received the response, call end track API with the tracking ID and the API response code to complete tracking for that API call. So once it's all done, that's it. You have done with the configuring part we have almost come to the end of our webinar and we'll just have a quick summary on whatever we went through today we talked about why it's important to monitor how users interact with your app and how Zoha haptics gives you the tools to help you monitor your user engagement first we looked at sessions which helps you understand when your users are active in your app and how long they stick around and then we saw about screens, which helps you see which parts of your app users are spending time on and where they might be getting stuck or really engaged. And lastly, we explored API tracking, which helps you to see which parts of your app that connect to the backend are running smoothly so you can fix any issues before they impact the user. And that's it. That's a wrap for today. Thank you so much for listening very patiently and staying throughout the sessions. Hope it was very useful. So we'll meet you soon in the upcoming webinars. Until then, happy app learning.